We'd like to thank Montecito Bank and Trust for their generous support in making Scam Squad possible. I'm Patty Teal. And I'm Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Scam Squad is up next. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Scam Squad. Welcome to Scam Squad. I'm Patty Teal here with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Patty. So, Patty, we have with us today somebody who I am calling the Good Samaritan. We have our guest, Jeannie, with us. She called my fraud hotline to report a scam, and she was kind enough to agree to come on our show and tell us what happened. So, welcome, Jeannie. It's so nice to have you here. I understand that this all started with an email. Is that correct? That's right, Vicki. So, tell us what happened. What did the email say? How did you get sucked into this? Well, first, I want to tell you that I just don't think I'm the kind of person that gets stuck into these kinds of things, so I'm quite surprised that this happened to me. It was an email scam, and it might be helpful if I give you the background of the person that I was in email touch with. So this is a gal that lives in my apartment complex. She's a 94-year-old woman, and she's so sweet, and I've known her for a number of years. And we see each other in the halls and chat a little bit here and there. And on occasion over the last, probably I've known her for over a decade, I've asked her if there's anything I can ever do for you. And her name is Nancy. If there's anything I can ever do for you, Nancy, just uh, here's my phone number and my email. Just let me know. So that would be helpful for you to know the background to how this all came about. So she emails me. I looked at it and I said, oh, yeah, that's Nancy's email. And it said, hi, hope all is well. I just wanted to make sure that you got this email. I'm unavailable on the phone. Can I ask for a quick favor from you? Thank you, Nancy. A few hours later when I got home, I said, hi, Nancy. I said, I just got home and I got your message. And yes, of course, let me know. What is it can I help you with? What I thought was her was really the scammer. Emails me back and she says, I need to get a Google Play gift card for a friend of mine who's diagnosed with stage four mesothelioma cancer. It's her birthday, but I can't do this now because I'm currently out of town. I tried purchasing online, but unfortunately had no luck with that. I was wondering if you could help me get it from any store near you, and I'll pay you back when I get back home. Please let me know if you can handle this. So I emailed her, who I thought was Nancy, back. Of course, I said, I've never heard of a Google Play card. I don't know what that is. So where do I get such a thing? And how much would you like to spend on it? What I thought was Nancy emailed me back and said, thanks so much for contacting me back. Google Play gift cards are sold practically everywhere in all different grocery stores. So you can get them there. The total amount that I need is $400, preferably in $100 denomination. As soon as you get the card, I need you to take them out, fold the silver strip over the back, and it will reveal the PIN numbers, which I'm going to need to send to my friend. So take a picture of it and send it all back to me in an email. Okay, I never even stopped to think that this was a I was, right. The only thing that kind of made me wonder is there was quite a lot of money for somebody like her to spend. And right. I know she's on a budget. Yeah. But then I thought, well, maybe this is a really good friend of hers. And I don't know her that well to know who her best friends are. So and I thought, well, maybe she just wants her friend to spend her time away from thinking about her sickness. And some things ran through my mind. But it seems a little bit much, but okay, I'll do that. So I went down to my local store. I got the gift card. I brought them back home. And I took the cards out. And I scanned the code numbers that she wanted. And I sent them back to who I thought was Nancy, which was not Nancy, but... Uh That evening, I thought, well, this is great. I'm so glad I could help her. So I went to bed feeling really good. And then I woke up. I get an email from her again, and it says, thanks so much. I sent the card numbers to my friend. But now I'm thinking I should send her more. I want to send her $600 more. Immediately, my heart sunk inside me. Because I thought, Uh oh, this is Uh not right. Yeah. This is not right. So I went down where she lives, and I said, oh, Nancy, I hope I didn't wake you did you ask me to get you a Google Play card down at the grocery store? She said, no, I didn't, she said, and I don't know what's going on, but this is not something I did. Right. So I just knew it was wrong. When the first call I made was to you at the Scam Squad, because I've heard your radio ads before. So what I did was, after I called you and left a message, 
I went online to ask, how do I report a scam? And they referred me to the Federal Trade Commission. And then I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to call Google Play. I'm going to tell them what happened to me, and maybe they can stop this. I contacted them, and they emailed me right back, and they said, give us the details. And so I sent them the information I had sent the scammer, and they emailed me back. This is all in the span of about a few hours and said, thank you for reporting so the person can't use the code numbers, which Mm -hmm. I was so relieved. And then I thought, well, now, how do I go about getting my money back? So I called my credit card company, hadn't showed up their records yet. So they said, wait a couple of days, and once it does, we can call it a dispute. And so I did. I waited actually till a few days later, and I called, and they said, yes, we can dispute this charge. So that's where it's at right now. Jeannie, the best way to combat these folks is to do exactly what you're doing. It's called public education. These scams start in other countries. They start in places like India or Nigeria or even Canada. So our local law enforcement really can't do anything about this. And the only thing we can do is to try and get the word out, which is why we're so grateful that you agreed to come on the show. By the way, let me tell you, my motto is always is, There is a scam for everyone. Mm -hmm. So most of us think, oh, it would never happen to me. I would never get caught up in a scam. Well, these scammers have become so clever and so sophisticated and so targeted at what they are doing that Mm -hmm. many people, many, many highly intelligent professional people call me and they all say the same thing. I can't believe I fell for this. I'm not Mm -hmm. the person that would get scammed. We are doing the best we can to kind of get the word out about this particular scam because it seems to be pretty rampant right now. Well, the thing that I think when I look back the next morning, as I told you when I woke up, I looked closely at the email. The scammer had changed the N with an M in Nancy. And I didn't look close enough because an N and an M are similar if you're looking. I wonder, Vicki, do you think the scammer knew somehow that Jeannie and this elderly 94-year-old woman knew each other? It seems like they must have. The only reason I say that she must have is that the first email that said, I'm unavailable by phone, but can I ask you for a quick favor? And then it said, thank you, Nancy. But she didn't say, hi, Jeannie. She just said, hi. Here's what I think, that somebody probably was able to hack into her email account and just Mm. went through the contact list. Ah, Um, you know what? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I would not be a bit surprised if other people in Nancy's contact list got this same message. And if they were able to hack into her account, maybe they were able to read some of the emails and they got a flavor of who these Uh, people were. You're the downstairs neighbor. So they mined the email account for any information they could have that would make their claim seem more legitimate reasonable that she wanted this to happen quickly and she was willing to go that extra mile, $400. So they were very clever with the way they approached you. Well, I sure bought it. (laughs) That's it. I think this is where I've learned my lesson because even if I bought the whole thing, it wouldn't be implausible for me to wait for a day. I think that it's just these scams happen and they want you to do things quickly. Yes, So now I'm learning that if I just even wait a day and then contact Nancy and just say, oh, you know, it was hard for her. If if it was a legitimate thing, Nancy would not be angry with me that I waited one day. Right. And so that would give me a chance to check with her personally. They were very clever with the way they approached you, and you were a good Samaritan, or you were trying to be a good Samaritan. Well, she's a very dear, dear woman. So let me ask you this. What store did you go to? It was down the street at Ralph. Okay, so it was at Ralph. And let me ask you this. Did the clerk or anybody say anything to you about, can we ask you what you're going to use these cars? Okay. Yeah, the the guy that rang me up said, how much do you want? Um, I said, because I brought him two cards. Each card was for $200. I said from $30 to $200 on each card. So Mm -hmm. he said, how much do you want to put on these? I said, well, I'd like a total of $400, so $200 on each card. And he said to me, are you sure this is a legitimate thing? He said, because Mm -hmm. some people are getting caught in this scam. And I said, oh, no, I know this woman so well. She would not lie to me. And so I wasn't thinking in terms of someone taking over her email. (laughs) Right. 
I know that Jeannie did not want to upset her friend Nancy by telling her anything more about these gift cards, but do you think that her computer needs to be checked? Yeah, I think that's a good point, Patty. I think in an abundance of caution, I would suggest to her that she may want to see if there's any bugs or malware in her computer. Are you talking about my computer or Nancy's? Probably (laughs) both. Okay. Probably both because this person now has your email and has gotten into your computer. So Nancy might want to check out her computer. Nancy, at the very least, would probably want to know if these notes are going out to everybody else she knows. Yeah. You know what? Mm -hmm. I will talk to her because I'm sure she's the kind of person that I could tell her what happened. Well, gosh, Jeannie, we thank you for being such a sweet person and such a good friend. All right, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Take care. Bye-bye. Boy, that was a great reminder, wasn't it, Vicki? Yeah. I could certainly see how you'd think you were helping out a friend. Sure. If you're not savvy to the whole gift card thing, it makes perfect sense. Well, I can't get out and I need to get money to my friend and the only way I can think to do it is with a gift card. I mean, that's why gift cards exist, right? Right. Time for some good news today? or As I tell you, Vicki, we always have time for some good news. We don't want to leave everybody as with all the downer news. <laughs> right, exactly. This came from the Department of Justice, and this was fairly recently. It was in the latter part of April that I got this bulletin. And the Justice Department has announced a nationwide crackdown on health care-related COVID-19 fraud. So... We know that there is a lot of fraud happening with programs like Medicare and other programs have sprung up as a result of COVID, programs that are intended to help people. So this was an article that talked about 21 defendants who were arrested and charged, including doctors, nurses, clinical labs, other medical providers, administrators of various facilities. They were charged with COVID-related Medicare fraud. And here's some of the things that they were doing. They were offering COVID-19 testing to induce patients to provide their personal identifying information and often a sample of saliva or blood. They then used this information to submit false claims to Medicare. Another thing they were doing, and we've talked about this before, they were producing false vaccination cards and selling them. They were billing for sham telemedicine phone calls that didn't occur. You know, this was something that hospitals started to provide and doctor's offices Mm -hmm. started to provide during COVID because people couldn't go in to visit the doctors or couldn't go into the hospitals for a general checkup. So these telemedicine phone calls were started. Some fraudsters were billing for sham phone calls that didn't actually happen. Another thing they were doing was misappropriating money that was supposed to be used by frontline providers. So they were pretending to be the frontline workers, nurses and so forth, and they were misappropriating money that was supposed to go to help these folks. And the proceeds from these scams were laundered through shell corporations in the United States and then sent to foreign countries, where I guess they were able to trace this money because they found out the money was used to purchase things like real estate and other luxury items. So in all, the losses exceeded $149 million. The Department of Justice's Health Care Fraud Unit, we're glad that they have one, a health care fraud unit, And our partners are dedicated to rooting out schemes that have exploited the pandemic. And this came from the Assistant Attorney General, Kenneth Polite, Jr. Today's enforcement action reinforces our commitment to using all available tools to hold accountable medical professionals, corporate executives, and others who have placed greed above care during an unprecedented public health emergency. Yes, I'm glad there's a health care fraud unit. Our government has a lot of expenses and they can stick with the legitimate ones and not be spending money for all these false medical things that don't even exist. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Vicki, for sharing the good news. I really appreciate it. I know that you'll be back next week. And before we go, would you give the fraud hotline number? Yes. Area code 805-568-2442. So that's 805-568-2442. Thanks, Vicki. I appreciate all you do. Thank you, Patty. All right. Bye-bye.